guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game is going to be Shards of Infinity as well as Shards of Infinity, the expansion Shadow of Salvation. The base game is made by Gary Rant and Justin Gary and the expansion is made by Justin Gary and Ryan Sutherland. You're going to be playing one game, which is Shards of Infinity, which is basically a competitive deck builder in which you're trying to basically remove your opponent's HP to zero and you can do that in two different ways or or if you're playing the expansion uh, then you're going to be trying to play a com cooperative mode which in which case you're going to be fighting against different bosses bosses will have their own unique decks as well as their own unique health and infinity level and you're working together with the same style of the original game but having to deal with a boss round which happens at the beginning of every round where everybody's gonna have to draw a boss card and deal with that card in some way and hopefully progressively do damage to the boss to get that boss to zero if you're playing the expansion there's going to be multiple levels of play because there's a campaign of, so of such in which you're going to go from one boss to the next the next based on whether you win or whether you lose and you're progressively going to fight harder and harder bosses with different abilities different style cards so on and so forth that's the basic idea of the game much like a basic deck builder uh, you're going to start with 10 cards in your deck you're going to be getting these cards here which are crystals which will give you currency you'll get one attack card with a blaster and then you're going to get a shard reactor and an infinity shard shard reactors do increased damage based on your infinity level and an infinity shard yeah and yeah sorry and then a shard reactor will give you more currency based on your infinity level and an infinity shard will give you increased damage based on your level but if you ever hit 30 this card will do infinite damage which is basically the way to win the game rather quickly uh, same thing as any other deck builder if you haven't played one you're going to shuffle this deck of 10 cards up you're going to draw five of them you're going to play those five cards out you're going to gather cur your currency and your attack separately purchase things with your currency attack things with your attack then you're going to discard all the cards that you've played into your discard pile and drop to five if your deck ever runs out you're going to reshuffle and then draw back to five and then of course with the expanded mode you're going to be starting off with the boss is his, his or her deck as well as drawing a card from the boss deck for each player and putting that card in front of each player that drew it and then go throughout your turn cooperatively at the same time dealing with the cards and the boss until you can get the boss to zero both of the games have a very very similar feel to them but a difference as far as the competitive variant and the expansion that adds that competitive variant for it. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you what comes in the base game for Shards of Infinity, give you the basic rundown of how it plays. Then I'll add in the expansion, show you how that plays, and then we'll talk about it in my review. So here we have Shards of Infinity, the deck building game with its core set. And then of course, Shards of Infinity, Shadow of Salvation. The core game is gonna be four players and you'll get four of these 10 card decks. You're you're also going to get one, uh, four of these different types of heroes that will have their health, which has a little tracker here that you can move around, and mostly you're going to start at 50 for the base game, which is just like that, and when you hit this point here, which is that X, that means you are dead. So you're going to get that, you're going to get the decks, you're also going to get a big stack of cards here, which is basically the deck builder aspect of the game, where you'll shuffle this up, you'll deal out a certain amount in a pool of cards, and then players are going to play cards from their hand to buy cards, and then facilitate their their deck by putting them into the discard pile eventually having to shuffle up their deck again and continue playing like that there is two types of uh, things you're going to be doing in this game whether it be damage which is this card here it has the damage it says gain two and every game two of these red things here you can do damage damage is calculated in a total slump sum so if you have 30 damage to deal out you can then choose that 30 and distribute it how you would like so you gather it all up then you go ahead and distribute it as you feel uh, that you would like to do. This infinity level will give you infinite damage, which is the most important thing for infinity level, and that is focused down here on this boss, uh, this, this character card here. Additionally, on your turn, you have this little passive ability, which lets you pay one currency, turn this to the side, and go from zero to one, or one to two, or two to three of this infinity level. So that's how that works. That's how you're gonna get 30 infinity, uh, 30 of the infinity level. Additionally, there's cards that will do that for you as well. The expansion adds another character, which is this guy here, Rez, an additional 10 card deck to play with Rez, two cards that are going to work with Rez. You're also going to be getting these cards here, which are new cards for the game. And additionally, there are these blue border ones, which if you do not, or if you 
you do own the expansion that is uh, came previous to this one, you can exchange them for these. If not, just put them into the deck here. So basically some new cards to add for more fun and variants. Additionally, there are the boss type cards. So as you see, there's four different types and there are different bosses based on this rule book here for the expansion. It'll show you the boss's HP based on the one you're fighting, the factions you're going to include for the boss deck. Boss deck and in this case, you're going to have this one and this one, which is going to be these two here, which you'll shuffle up together, as well as the boss's uh, main deck. And as you can see, this says Moxai, so you'll take that, you'll take these two, you'll put all of them into a deck, you'll shuffle them up, and you won't use the rest. The rest is going to be for other bosses. As you can see, there are six different bosses. You're going to have this guy here, which is uh, the Crimson Thorn. They're going to have Moxai. You're going to have the Mind Hacker, and all the way down here. Each of them are separated. An expansion symbol is in the bottom left to illustrate which expansion it is from. If it doesn't have a symbol, it's from the base game. And of course, you're going to get some additional cards here as well that you can go ahead and utilize. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Additionally, the boss expansion, the uh, this one here is going to include this for the boss's HP, as well as his or her infinity level, and some tokens that will be used for specific cards. So let's go ahead and just show you the base game first real quick, and then we'll move on to the boss and the expansion and whatnot. I'll just show you two players really quick. I'll put these guys out here. There's two different decks of cards so we won't need these at all. We'll go ahead and move these away. And each player is going to get one of these decks here. And then you're going to go ahead and have this deck shuffled here. You're going to shuffle each of your 10 card decks. And then you're going to go ahead and draw five cards. So I went and shuffled these decks here. They're each separated. Both players are going to start at 50 HP. So make sure you move your tracker to 50. If you get to zero, that's it. And then you're also going to start at zero infinity level, except for the second player. You're going to get one infinity when you're playing a two-player game. So if this player is going first, he's going to get a free tick up onto one. Okay, each player is going to have their five cards in hand. One, two, three, four, and five, just like that. And this player as well, one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, these are all the same, so we'll go ahead and draw these ones instead so I can show you something different. Okay, so we got our deck of five and our hand of five here. And then, of course, there's going to be cards that come out. And I believe there are five cards or six cards. There's six cards that come out. So we'll put out six cards. And then there's going to be the deck that is going to sit next to it. So I'll go ahead and actually move this over a little bit. So here's the six cards in the pool that you can purchase. Here's how it works. The top right-hand side is the cost of the card. Then the color of the card is the type. And then the text tells you what the card does. And if it has one of these little gear symbols, if you have that infinity amount on your character board, so in this case he has zero, but if he had 20, he'd get an additional effect. Whenever you gain a crystal, that's currency. Whenever you gain a red, that is damage. Uh, another interesting thing about this game, too, is some of the cards have these red borders around them. If you want, you could purchase these cards for their cost and put them into your discard pile. However, if you don't want to do that, you can actually choose any of these red cards with the red borders, and you can pay the cost and just do the ability, and these cards get removed from the game. So if I wanted to, for instance, spend two, gain two attack, and banish a card from my hand or discard pile, I can do that putting it into this discard pile as opposed to my own, but it only works for these. Another interesting thing, too, is uh, the characters or cards with HP are character cards. They'll come in front of you, and they will basically give you an ability once per turn that you can utilize, and by exhausting them, by turning them to the side, you can do that ability. If at any point they take damage up to their health, they get removed into your discard pile. And there's other cards that have things like this, which is defense. If you get attacked when it is not your turn and you have one of these cards in your hand, you can reveal it, preventing the damage. That damage can be prevented from turn to turn to turn until it is your turn. So each turn has its own defense. So if I if I took two damage on Grant's turn and I showed him this card and then Callie went next and she also tried to do two damage to me, I would still have this card revealed and I still would not take the damage up until my turn. So that's how those work. There's a couple other cards that do some other things. Mainly it's going to be things like gaining HP, gaining new ticks onto this infinity meter, as well as doing damage. And of course the characters have interesting combinations and whatnot. So basically I have these five cards. I've got five currency here. I spend all five by playing them out. I choose cards that I would like. So for instance, maybe I want this one for two. That gives me three left. I put a new one out. I buy this one for two more. And now I have one left. I can use that one to pay here to take up on this thing here. 
After that, my turn is over. Everything goes to the discard pile. I draw five new cards. If I were to draw a card and there's none in my deck, I would then shuffle here. And then, of course, I would make sure that it's refilled, and the next player would get a chance to go, and would go back and forth whenever damage is dealt by placing them out. So, for instance, in this turn here, I have two, three, four currency that I can go ahead and utilize. So maybe I want to go ahead and take this one here, as well as spend one to take up on this. Then uh, this gets refilled. I now have plus one damage, plus two damage, which is three damage. I would spend these, putting them into my discard pile at the end of the round, and take three damage from this player here, going from 50 to 47. He would then draw up his next five cards, and it would be the next player's turn. And it would keep going like that until somebody hit zero HP. That's the basic idea of the base game for the game Shards of Infinity. Now, if I wanted to play with the expansion, which is going to be the this one right here, which is Shadow of Salvation, I'm going to choose Mock Size. So I'll take Mock Size cards, his deck right here. I will also take the two faction types, which is going to be this one here, the Shadow, the, I don't know what they're called. They have specific names for them. I'll take this one and this one. And that is the boss's deck. I won't use this. These are the rest of the bosses, so I won't need these. I could also go ahead and take these and put them into this deck along with these guys here. And uh, these get set aside. These are special cards that will t give you, uh, that will be put into your hand if you beat certain bosses uh, and they'll be used from round to round. So they're basically uh, base cards that you'll start with. I'll take this deck here. I'll shuffle it up to have a new boss deck. If the boss calls for these tokens, I'll use these. Otherwise, I don't need them. I will leave this page out as well. This symbolizes that the boss has 50 HP. And in addition to that, he has a special ability as well as whenever he ticks up on his infinity meter from 5 to 15 to 30, he'll gain new ongoing passive abilities that you can utilize. Other bosses do different things, but that's how this guy works. So he's got 50 HP. He starts with zero. And then you're going to go ahead and go. And you start the game pretty simply by working together in this mode. So this is a completely separate style of play. Both players will draw up to five all at once. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five. And they've got their hands set here, so they're good. And uh, they're also starting at zero for a new game, as well as 50 HP for both of them. And now we're ready to go. They got their hand size, they got their characters. And what happens, the first thing is the boss will flip over cards from its his, his or her deck. Those cards will be all sorts of different things, but in general, they're going to be here characters that will do certain things to you. When they come out, they'll they'll do certain things. So in this case, he does two damage every turn, and this deals double damage if there are any other simulacrons in play. Wow, that's nasty. So wait, so first, first of all, he'll come out, and then he's going to do his thing, which will do two damage to my character, putting me at 48. No new, no simulacrons in play, so he's going to sit there. This guy will come out. That's a simulacron. That means he's going to take two damage. Plus, since there's another one out, he will do double damage, which will be four, putting me at 46. Then these guys will stay here, and they'll stay in play until they are defeated. And now it is the player's turn. And it'll play just like Shards of Infinity, in the sense that you're both going to play at the same time, playing the cards from your hand, gaining new cards from this pool here, and putting them into your discard pile. Whenever you do damage, you can do damage to the things in play, whether it be your opponents or whether it be your own guy. And then additionally, you can do damage to the boss, his or herself. Whenever you want to buy a card, there is usually a leader that will determine whether you should be able to do that or not. Like if it ever comes down to we, you both want this card, you guys will have to fight, duke it out with the leader. But in general, you'll be buying cards at the same time, putting them into your discard piles, putting out new cards up until the point where you can't do anything else. Hopefully defeating the enemies, putting them into the discard pile of the boss. And if not, they'll stay in play. And then you would continue the round by everybody drawing back up again, rinse and repeat, new cards will come out, read what they say, and continue play. For instance, this one says when it's played, he's going to gain plus one on his level. And in addition, players may collectively spend five currency to discard this card. Oh, that's pretty useful. And then over here, same thing. He would gain one unless players collectively spent currency to discard the card. And all the bosses have different things. What's also interesting about this game mode too is that it's campaign based. So at the beginning, you'll go ahead and choose. It'll tell you the story. You'll choose Moxai or you'll choose Vox Omega. Put the boss out, set up the deck, 
play through it, and depending on if you're victorious or not, you'll go to page 12 or 30 if you fail, fighting new bosses and new challenges along the way, gaining new cards to add to your base deck, and whenever you beat a boss or lose to a boss, you're going to discard all the cards you gained in that deck and just start with your main 10 again, unless it says otherwise with these specific cards, playing until the boss gets to hopefully 0 HP, or if you guys all hit zero, or one of you hit zero, that's going to end play for you guys. But anyway, that's the basic idea for the game Shards of Infinity and Shards of Infinity Shadow of Salvation, a competitive and cooperative deck builder depending on how you want to add the different pieces to the game. Shards of Infinity is a very basic deck builder on a lot of levels, and in fact, when I first pulled this game out, I almost immediately knew how to play it because it has a lot of the standard deck builder requirements and or rules, much like Ascension and Dominion and many others I've played. You'll be getting a 10 card deck, you'll be drawing your 5 cards, you'll be playing those cards, gaining new cards into your discard pile, and eventually shuffling them all up and to make a larger deck or a more competitive deck to where you'll fight your opponent going back and forth. In general with Shards of Infinity, the main thing with this is, as my buddy Grant would say, you want to make the deck, and the deck allows you to basically draw additional cards to the point where you can draw your entire deck, because when you draw up to where you have nothing Nothing left and you all the cards in your hand that's it that's what you have but if you can do that to make a cohesive powerful deck you can eventually win the game that way so it lets you do that there's certain cards that will you draw two cards or draw one and gain some kind of benefit and if you do that you're gonna progressively make this deck that basically lets you become very 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 powerful it's a really unique style of play in the sense that uh, as opposed uh, even though I've said basically it's a very similar game as to all the, one, the rest of them because what's unique about this one is this little shard reactor uh, uh, the little infinity symbols here where you can gain them on your little player board here. You want to hit 30 as an option to winning the game, but you don't need to. And you can kind of customize your deck to either go for full damage, or you can customize your deck to gain these little tick-ups on your player board, which allow you to be more powerful with certain cards, but also additionally eventually be able to deal infinity damage. That just means you win the game when you draw this card if you have 30 ticks on your infinity meter. Uh, most of the cards are going to function very similar to Ascension with a couple unique caveats, one being cards that are creatures will go in front of you, and they function similar to Magic the Gathering in some ways, as they have health and they have an attack that they can do every turn, and if people don't kill them, you become a little more stronger, so you can go the route of having many, many minions, uh, as well as there's another interesting little aspect that I like that isn't actually that, there's not that frequent you'll find in the base game, but when you get them they're nice, such as these little defense cards, which will give you defense so when people hit you on your turn, um, when it's not your turn, you'll have it in your hand, you can reveal it and be like, nah, you're not doing damage to me, not this turn, which is really cool. And that's basically the base game. It's pretty simple. Back and forth, eliminate your opponents. You can play up to four players, and it plays the same way regardless of if it's two, three, or four. Of course, with three and four, there's a lot more politicking in it, so if you want a competitive game where you're just a back and forth aggressive game, where you don't talk politics, you don't go, oh, don't hurt me, hurt him. You want to go with two players. Three and four players adds that you want to kind of spread your damage out, or if you go full force on one guy, it might leave you open for another guy, so it becomes a lot more of a, diplomic, a diplomacy type of a feel to the game. Then you get to the expansion, Shadows of Salvation. This one here adds an interesting little campaign to a deck builder that I haven't seen before, allowing you to fight bosses that have their own unique decks that feel different as you fight them. They get stronger, they get more difficult. Players will work together, cooperating at the same time to play cards, to gain attack, to do damage to either the boss's minions or the boss itself. You have to make some tough decisions because sometimes you're going to want to do a certain thing or gain a certain card, but it might be at the detriment of the group, and in which case you have to choose choose most of the time to side with the group because if you don't that can get kind of like oh why didn't you do that well I wanted this one card well now we're all going to take 10 damage and possibly die next turn ah oh, but I didn't want to do that and so it gets into that kind of back and forth but it's a lot of fun and it, while, it, while it is the same style of game it feels very similar to the base game it is very different in in nature due to the fact that it is a, a cooperative game from a competitive game each of the bosses are cool too they feel different you're either dealing with portals or you're dealing with dealing with detonating traps different minions that grow more powerful with the more that there are or minions that like to be by themselves you're always gonna have to deal with your own minion um 
in front of you, otherwise it's going to hurt only you. But cooperatively working together to determine which minions should die based on who has the most health, who has the least health, what the boss is going to do in the next turn. And of course, the boss's infinity meter, I, I, which I don't even know if it's called infinity meter, but I just like to call it that. As it grows it, incrementally, it becomes more and more uh, difficult to beat, up to the point where you're basically not going to beat the boss because it's just far too challenging. But it presents, presents a new challenge to a deck builder with a cooperative play. Uh, I really like Shards of Infinity. I played this multiple times at PAX Unplugged, and I played it multiple times after that, and it has been a lot of fun. Uh, the competitive mode is something I'd always recommend. I think if you want a serious competitive game, you want to play two players with it, and if you don't mind the politics of a three to four player game, you'll still just enjoy it as much, but it does feel differently with the, that number of players. The, com the, com the cooperative variant of the game, it doesn't matter the number of players you're playing it with, you're still going to have a good time. Everybody just draws an extra card, basically everybody just draws a card, so it makes the game balanced regardless of the number of players, and you still have to deal with the different aspects of each boss as they continually get more and more aggressive with different unique tactics and abilities and things you're going to want to cycle around. Additionally, when I talked about the deck, the deck allowing you to draw all the things, in a cooperative variant of this game, it's going to be really hard to do that because you have to work to the will and the best, the betterment of the group. And if you don't and make this perfect deck, everybody else is going to suffer. In which case, when somebody dies, you're you're in for, that's it. You, you, you didn't do what you needed to do. So there has this give and take to the game, which changes the style of building decks for the most, uh, the most advantageous deck builder out there. Overall, solid, solid game. Really, really enjoyed this one. If you want a quick deck builder that's easy to understand, quick to learn, quick to play, definitely check out Shards of Infinity. If you want to play a deck builder that has a cooperative nature, this one is a good choice. I like the different campaign aspects of the game, and I think people will enjoy that. Otherwise, the Cthulhu deck builder is pretty good too. Those are like these are like my two favorite cooperative deck builders I've played out there. But either way, I really enjoy this, and I hope this helps you in some way. As far as negatives goes, there's a little bit of politicking in the larger player games, whether it's competitive, cooperative, and of course, if you don't like the fact that a player can basically be able to go ahead and drop his whole deck if he gets the right cards that flop out, because there is a bit of luck in the game regarding what cards pop out when they pop out maybe not for you if you don't like deck builders obviously not for you artwork is solid component quality is great i love this game check it out